Hey everyone, thanks for watching today. I got a, a really exciting video for you today or interview for you. Uh, I have my friend Michael Hernandez with me. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Thanks for taking me. Oh, absolutely. I want to make sure you get on this, on this interview channel because uh, your story is, is, you know, kind of that, for me, it's kind of like you're on first base, right? We interview some people on this channel that have, you know, they completed their trip, right? They got hundreds of units or are doing big business. Then we interview a lot of people that really haven't started. I don't think I've done a very good job of getting in, you know, talking about what first base feels like, or, you know, you're, you're at that first step. Uh, so I, I know you have a couple of units. I know you've been in real estate for a while. So why don't we just paint a picture of who Michael is and, and where Michael's at in his uh, real estate journey, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So I've been doing real estate full time as a realtor for 10 years. Um, got my license in 2008, uh, went full time uh, into the business at the end of 2009. And, um, you know, everybody said it was a terrible time to get into real estate as an agent. Um, but it's something that I've always wanted to do. So 10 years later, here I am. Um, I do, a, I do own a couple of rentals now and I have invested, a, in a couple of, um, flip properties as well. So. Yeah, well let's peel that apart because there's, there's a few Absolutely. things there. there. So 2009, I remember that, that year fondly because <laughs> it was, uh, it was really the start of our, our binge of buying, right? We bought a lot in nine. Actually, probably we bought a few in 09. We bought a lot in 10, 2010, because uh -huh. they were just giving stuff away. Cheap, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, you know, why don't you talk about that first year? I mean, were you, were you dealing with banks? Were you, deal, were you an REO agent? Were you dealing with buyers? Who, who was your, you know, who were you working with in 09 and, and, and 10? Uh, so in 2009, <clears throat> I was um, working at Century 21 here in Fresno mm -hmm. um, and didn't know anything about the business. I knew I wanted to do the business. And so when I transitioned full time, what I did really was show up every day. That was the number one thing I did. Show up every day. I would sit at the cubicle and just kind of start to figure things out, listen to other people's problems. Um, Fast forward about six, seven months into uh, being there, um, there was an agent in the office that had an REO account and was looking for uh, some, you know, some help. And so um, we got partnered up, everything worked out. And that kind of kept me afloat in my first year because my first year I only did, I think it was seven or eight deals, man. Um, it, it was, it was an interesting time, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough, right? And and what well, you and I know this, but let's just put it out there because you never know who's watching. The average right. real estate transaction in Fresno in two thousand and nine and ten wasn't a whole lot of money, right? No, man. We're talking <laughs> some hundred k in in lots of cases. So seven yeah. or eight deals on 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 that is is not a lot, right? So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but, but you stuck with it, and, and you've stuck kept at it, it for for a decade, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, what I'd love to peel back is. Um, you know, I don't know what the real percentage is, so I'll just give my gut opinion. Uh -huh. You know, of, of all the realtors and agents that I know, I think there's probably certainly less than 20%, probably less than 15% actually own rental properties, right? Many of them own their, uh, many of them are owner occupants for sure, but not many of them realize that they're at the forefront of seeing deals and creating deals. So uh, I'm curious. Uh, what did you do first, rental or a flip? Uh, first property I bought was uh, hold, a rental. All right, so let's peel that back. So what, what year was it? Tell us a little bit about it because when agents and, and realtors invest, I think it's this genius, right? And the ones that don't, I'm like, why not? So why don't we tell us about this first hold? Um, so three years ago, 2015, uh, short, short sale market was kind of starting to fade away. Mm -hmm. but there was still a lot of good, you know, sales to be, to be made. Mm -hmm. Um, so I knew that being patient, um, and this comes from being a realtor, mm -hmm. being patient with the short sale is going to be your best, your best bang for your buck. And so that's what I did. I picked up a short sale. Um, it was already, um, you know, tenant occupied. Uh, so it was already cash flowing. It was just a bad situation for the seller. Yeah. Um, turned out to be a good situation for myself. So yeah, well, let's peel that back again because not a lot of people watching this have only been investing or thinking about real estate for the last three or four years, which has been a seller's market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you started, it was the land of the REO market, right? 09, Correct. 10, 11, 12. Uh, that dried up when the big hedge funds and deep pockets came in and just changed the market overnight. I remember it vividly. It was like, where did everything go? 
So REOs were over. Then it really did go to a short sale market. Correct. And unfortunately, a lot of buyers and investors got used to the REO market where it was kind of a yes, no decision. Let's go. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the short sales, I mean, some of those, I mean, I, I got a couple that dragged on almost six months. Right. <laughs> And you just yeah. kind of got to stay at it and stay at it and stay at it. And uh, a lot of those deals blew up, you know, right at the end because people just like, oh, I bought something else. I didn't even think you were serious anymore. So, right. um, you know, how long did your short sale take and how long did you have to hold on and be patient? Do you remember? Um, so this one was kind of, um, a, you know, it was a replacement buyer situation. Yep. So the footwork was already done per se. Yeah. Um, and it was just a replacement buyer situation. So, in that one instance, it was maybe 30 to 40 days or so. Yeah, but um, again, that short sale probably took, yeah. I don't know, maybe three months, four months. Yeah, that's what I saw a lot of is, yeah. is the person who started the short sale wasn't always the one that finished. And, and as you call it, you were the replacement Correct. buyer and you, you, got, Correct. you got, again, that's, in my opinion, that's where agents sort of been all over this stuff. Right. Because <laughs> you're seeing it, right? You're seeing buyers disappear, but the, the short sale is still trucking along. So, uh, so good for you for, for sticking in with that. Do you remember approximately what you paid and what the rent was? Um, yeah, that one's a killer, man. That was about $70,000 purchase, $1,200 yeah. in rent. Oh, I feel so bad for you. That's just terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And did you get a loan on that or did you pay cash? Do you remember? <clears throat> yeah. So that was um, a cash purchase and then um, delayed financing, traditional financing. Yeah. Coop and keep going. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's genius, right? You come in as cash, you put in a hard money or private money or your own pocket, right. uh, whatever you can, then you go back and you refi it out later. You pull out all 70, if not more. It was already tenant occupied. It was already leased. You know, that, that, deal, uh, that deal doesn't suck. So congratulations. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. So, yeah. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we talk about your first flip now? What, what, what was the story behind that, if you don't mind? Um, so the first, the first flip that I did, um, was out here in Visalia. <clears throat> um, I had been looking for some time and it, I mean, it was just, it was for me, it was finding the right deal. Um, like a lot of your videos mentioned, you know, making sure the numbers work. And so I came across a property that wasn't in the local MLS. So I have access to Fresno yep. and, um, Tulare County MLS. And so this one was, um, registered incorrectly per se ah. in the Visalia MLS and the Tulare MLS. So that was one of the things that drew me because I was like, why is this one sitting here and it doesn't have action. And I know there's like, you know, tons of investors here. Um, and then it was on like a, um, a back side auction website. Uh -huh. uh, so it was just kind of published in the MLS, but everything was directed through um, an auction website. Mm. And so I went onto the auction website. There was literally like, I think one competitor. Hmm. Um, I ended up picking that one up. Um, did probably more work than I needed to. It, it was a learning experience mm -hmm. and it definitely took a long time. <laughs> yeah. So just roughly what were the numbers? So you, you picked um, it up for, again, rough numbers is fine. I think it was like, it was about 130-ish. Okay, 130. Repairs. Shoot, the repairs were probably in about the 40-ish okay. range. All right. And 40, then, 50 range. Then you sold um, for and then what, two, 12, 210, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, that yeah. So again, so lots of things to peel apart, right? And, and yeah. like you, there's the, this real estate game. Uh, we're all people, right? It's a big people business. And sometimes, right. you know, sometimes people make mistakes, as you said, right? You found a listing that was incorrectly put in the wrong MLS. I can't tell you how many times I've found properties that were just misidentified. Right. Right. And, and they just, when they're misidentified, they miss people's built in searches. Right. I know there's lots of people that get notifications every time there's a three bedroom, two bath house at, you know, whatever zip code. But if the zip <laughs> code's wrong or the house configuration, I mean, they just miss them. Right. Because they're, they're right. relying on automation. So when you right. do your homework, you pay attention, you can find these things. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you took a shot. And yeah, you, you learned your lessons, right? You, you spent 40, which was over improved. If you were to do it today, what do you think you'd spend on the, on the make ready or repairs? It probably would be closer to like 25. Wow. So 25, see, it, it needed work, yeah. but it would have, I would have, you know, it, things would be laid out differently. Yeah. More, a little bit more organization, stuff like that. So. And that's all experience. You basically, you, you got your, I don't know, college education in flips or, or junior college or whatever you want to call it. So <laughs> as long as you learn and improve, 
Right. It's all good. So, right. Um, so as you sit here today, you're now an agent for 10 years. How many rentals do you have? Um, three rentals and one that we're, we're working on to get back up on the market. Okay. So, so, four. And, so and then how many flips have you done roughly? Uh, I've did six flips right now. Six so flips. I haven't did a lot. That's okay. But, you know, it's balance. <laughs> uh, again, let's, let's, you, you say, you say, you say it so humbly. I just want you to want you wow. to appreciate this as an agent you are probably in the top three or 4% of using your knowledge and experience to change your financial future. There are lots of agents that hustle and make a decent commission and all of that and spend it all. You're Correct. hustling and changing your future with your job. So appreciate yeah. that and realize that you're different and unique. You should feel very, very good about that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I don't, so, and sometimes I don't see it that way because my outlook is, you know, we don't have 401ks. We don't, we're not a corporate situation. So either you make something happen for yourself with the knowledge that you've learned or you don't. And like you said, unfortunately, there's probably a lot of agents that just don't. Oh, there's no probably in that statement. <laughs> <laughs> you, you drop that word right now. <laughs> Again, I, I don't know what the real numbers are, but if yeah. you think about agents that you know, and I, I can think of, I think there are four agents that I know that have more than 10 rental properties. Wow. Yeah. And you know, so you're in, you're in, you're in special company. So appreciate you. that. You know, I'm not telling you to stop. Don't take it that way. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I just don't want you to, to, you, you should feel good about it. You shouldn't, you know, it, it, what you're doing is awesome. And you're, and you're doing rentals and you're doing chunk money with flips. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. you know, you do, I mean, if you do it right, uh, you know, my gut opinion is if it's not there already, you could probably make more money with your flips in two or three years once you get the process down and all of that than you yeah. do in commission. Uh, yeah you know, the possibilities out there. So that's pretty awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's rewind the clock. Let's, uh, let's talk about, you know, Michael pre agent. So 10 years ago, what were you doing? 08, 07. I like to just talk about your origin story. So people watching this can sort of see themselves. What, what were you doing before this? Um, so before real estate, I had a full-time job as a um, claims examiner insurance. Hmm. That was the worst job I ever had in my life. Um, you literally get to work <laughs> and you sit in a cubicle seven and a half hours a day. Um, and you're probably on the phone, you know, 40 to 50% of the day. Um, you have people complaining at you. And so, um, it, it was terrible. And what, what made it even worse was it was maybe it was a parking lot over probably 400 to 500 yards away from the century 21 building where I had my license already hung. Oh, wow. And so it just got to the point where, um, you know, I was, I hated going to work. Um, and I thought to myself, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Um, you know, I want, I want to do real estate. And so eventually when I had that opportunity, I, I told myself, I'm 26, 27. Um, you know, if I fail now, I still have a bachelor's degree to fall on. I can walk out into the community, go get another $40,000 job and I can be like everybody else. And I'm okay with that. But if I don't take upon the opportunity to see if I can fulfill my dreams, then, you know, how am I going to sleep at night? Yeah. And so that's kind of what brought me into real estate and never so, took away. <laughs> yeah, good for you. So let's yeah. talk about that. Cause there's, there are so many people out there that are probably watching this video still that have that dream like you do. Uh huh. Um, you know, I guess let's first acknowledge what that dream meant for you. Was it freedom, flexibility? I mean, wh what was it about the real estate dream? And then we'll talk about kind of how you stayed true to that. So, so what was it about real estate that got you so excited and, and was your dream? Um, so that's a funny story, but when I was little, um, everything that, used to, that I used to see in the media, on TV, um, you know, all of the stars per se, um, in one way, shape, or form, I know I started to notice a trend. A lot of these men and women um, were, you know, were economically well off because of real estate. Mm. And this is, you know, I'm eight, nine, ten years old. Um, and so, <clears throat> fast forward, go to college. Um, I uh, did a business degree at Fresno State Entrepreneurship Program. So you're able to kind of design the tail end of that program. And so I took took four um, real estate courses to, to fulfill the entrepreneurship program requirement. At the same time, they fulfilled the BRE or mm. DRE requirement 
and so I always knew I wanted to do real estate. Um, in one of the in one of the courses, though, one of the things that was super eye opening was we went to um, one of the commercial uh, offices. They had a meeting there. They had a couple of agents, uh, commercial agents, kind of do presentations. And I'll never forget one of the gentlemen um, that went in to that presentation. And he started to talk about his portfolio. Um, and he said, you know, I get a check a day. You know, I own 30, 30 I think it was like 33, 32 rentals. Wow. And so <clears throat> he was like, I get a check a day. You know, I'm so many years old already. I'm getting ready to retire. Um, yada, yada, yada. This is a perfect setup. That was the first time that I ever thought about the possibility of um, actually owning property um, mm. and have that one check a day kind of situation. And so that's always been my motivation is to be able to retire yep. with rentals, um, you know, at least more than half paid off. And so that you have that income, um, yeah. you know, kind of stabilizing you. Yeah, it's it's freedom, it's choices, you know, options, whatever you want to call it. So um, right. that, that's awesome. I, I think that's I think that's the right way to start, right? Some people I talk to when I ask them that question, and I ask I try to ask everybody. Some people take it to the I want to be a millionaire, it's easy, you know, I want the fancy cars, and I'm like, woof, this is not going to go well, right? Because real estate's yeah. going to test you. It starts slow. It takes you know five, eight, ten years, depending on where your your freedom number is. Um, right. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you're grounded. So over 10 years, right now you've had these rentals, you've done some flips. How, how have you stayed true to it? Because I know real estate tests you, right? You have, <laughs> you have surprises. Um, how have you stayed true to that over time? Um, that that's been the toughest part. And I think that's the, that's the biggest aspect that I continue to work on every day. Um, really for me, it's just the long-term goal of, of, you know, meeting, my ability to have at least those 30 doors. Um, and so I know no matter how tough it is, no matter how bad a deal can go, um, that if I give up now, I'll never get there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like, Hey, at least I'm three to four in, right. it's only 24 to more to go, 26 more to go or whatever the number becomes. Um, because definitely after listening to a lot of guys that you've interviewed, yeah. it changes your mindset, man. I mean, it's like, you know, four in a year, five in a year, 10 in a year. Um, you see other people doing it. Yeah. So you start to understand that different things are possible. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I really do think um, most people watching this should try to target getting four. I think four right. changes your life. Yeah. Um, both financially, both, both sort of, you know, currently and future. And then you get to decide, right? For some of you, four is enough, right? Four is done. You've got a full-time job. You've got a busy life. Four is okay, right? If you get to four, I'm happy for you. But if you get to four and you decide you want more, great. Let's talk about getting to 10, mm -hmm. right? So th those are some pretty, pretty big things. So um, I, love, I love your story. I love how you started. I love that you're doing flips and rentals. So uh, I, I'm, in, I'm curious to see, Michael, where you're going to take this in the future. So if you don't mind, sort of paint the vision for Michael in three to five years. What, what does that look like for you? Uh, three to five years. I, five years, I probably want to have at least, um, you know, some kind of fourplex, maybe 10plex, sixplex, okay. um, or a commercial building. Um, I think that that's going to be a pretty cool opportunity down the road. Um, you know, once we get back into a downswing in the market, Yep. <clears throat> but definitely continue to build the portfolio. Uh, that's the number one goal for me right now is continue to build, continue to build and um, continue to reinvest the money that I'm making. Okay. So let's, so that's, so congrats, but I'm going to push you. <laughs> that's what I do. So, you know, so you're, you're at three rentals now you, in three to five years. You know, let's try to let's try to push it a little bit. So, are we talking adding two rentals a year? Are we talking, you know, two this year, three next year? Let's put some numbers on this so you can go back and look at it, look at this video, and, and see how you did. So, th so this, so for this year, I want to yep. 2019. I definitely want to go from four to eight. Okay. Um, and in the next two years, I definitely want to be able to max out my ten. Um, okay. Fannie well, Mae, yep. ten loans for sure. Okay. Um, and Five years from now, you know, I'd, I'd love to be halfway to 30 or 35, man. Okay. So that's, I mean, 30, that, that's let's call it 30 properties or 30 right. doors. 30 doors. 30 doors. 30 doors. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we got some real numbers that you can go back and hold yeah. yourself accountable to. Uh, Absolutely. So let's, let's play with the other side. So what is Michael looking at? Two flips a year, you know, kind of chunk money or, or what do you kind of play with that, you think? Um, right now, I, I, 
did probably, I did three last year. So I want to be able to do between for sure five and 10 men. A year? I, I think that or this total. year, this Ooh, year right now. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like this. We're one. in a tough, we're in a tough year. Um, I think that it, you know, if I'm diligent and I do the work and I, and I start to network myself a little bit more, yeah. um, I think that I can find some opportunities out there. Yeah. No, I think so. five flips a year is awesome. Yeah. Um, and again, I think you're, you're, you know, being a, being an agent, you know, having access, but more importantly, sh- being an agent, taking action is going to do you really, really well. So I, I right. applaud you for that. So thank you. I, lo- I love these goals. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I always close by turning it over to you, but I, you know, I know when we sort of opened this before we turned on the recording, uh, I thought maybe you might have some questions for me. Uh, do you, do you, do, you know, I hate to put you on the spot cause I actually didn't prepare you for that. Uh, yeah. but if you, if you, anything jumps out at you that you might want to ask, why don't we do that first? And then we'll go to the wrap up next, if you don't mind. Um, you know, one of, one of the things kind of, kind of one of the only things is, um, so when you were in kind of my shoes, you're at two, yep. three, four, five, mm-hmm. um, three of them are leveraged on, on my situation. Yeah. How did you start to see yourself get to the next ones? How did you get to 10? Yeah. So, so if, let's, let's just be clear. So when I started, this was 2003 financing was a little different, right? Right. So, I didn't have this arbitrary 10 rule, right? Um, but it doesn't, but you know, I got to eight units uh, in about four and a half years. So I started with, I only started with 40 grand. That's what most okay. people don't realize is we yeah. started, you know, with, with $40,000. I bought my first house on Norris drive. Uh, I used half of that cause I didn't know any better. I put 20, <laughs> 20,000 down. Right. It cost roughly a hundred, hundred grand roughly. Um, uh, then we bought our next one on Terrace, uh, put 10% down because, hey, you know, Countrywide was willing to loan me, you know, 80% first, 10% second. So I only put 10% down. And then we brought another uh, one on Ferris with 10% down. So roughly 10 grand. So that's, that's kind of where the $40,000 went. And that was over a span of about 18 months, maybe 20 months. Uh, and then what we did is I refinanced. We refinanced that first property on Norris Drive and we took out all of our down payment plus a little bit. Then six months later, we refied Ferris because if you remember that 2003, four, five, six in Fresno, uh, appreciation was out of this world. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so I used, I basically refinanced. I didn't have any big piles of money. I didn't have, some of the people I talked to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest. That wasn't us. We just stayed true to it and we refied. And then what we did, what, what really saved us. Uh, was right in 2008, I think it was, we sold or we exchanged all our houses. Uh, We sold our houses and we moved into apartments because it's weird. I just did a video on it this morning. Um, Mm -hmm. In like 08, nobody was talking multifamily. It was all houses, right? Everybody at the dinner parties, I just bought this three bedroom, two bath house or four, two or blah, blah, blah. Nobody was buying the five units, the 10 units. So we sold houses for less or we sold houses for more than the cost of a five unit apartment building that right. was renting for 150% more. It just was right. ludicrous. It didn't make sense. Um, so that's what saved us, right? We went from eight to 80 units, you know, in, in the span of about 18 months. Uh, where I'm going with this is I think today's market is the reverse. I think everybody's talking apartments today. Uh-huh. Everybody I talk to, these new investors are going, I want units, I want units. And I know lots of property owners and, and some of them are selling these C-class properties um, for just way too much money and people are paying for them. They're like, you're paying 80 K a door for something that's worth 55. Yeah. Uh, and I think they're going to get hurt. So, um, you know, I think people need to pay attention to where the market is and when lots of buyers swim around units and when there's just not as many, right, there's a lot more houses than fourplexes, you, you can get hurt pretty quickly. So I, you know, there's nothing wrong with a nice quality house in today's market. So, um, yeah, I, I, I prefer houses myself as well. So, oh yeah, I, absolutely right. They're easiest to trade. They're easiest to to get. You you have the least amount of extra expenses, right? Oh, by the right. way, what what do I mean by that? Well, in a fourplex, do you know the landlord is responsible for water, right? Because you probably have common areas and land and all of that. And oh, by the way, you have a huge garbage bin you've got to fill and, and empty. And yeah, you know, I mean, there was a fourplex a buddy of mine was looking at that. If you just took two of the units, he'd get fifteen hundred a month. But oh, by the way, the extra expenses are about three fifty a month, where he could buy a, a beautiful brand new remodeled house and produce twelve hundred for the same price as two units. I'm like, what are you doing? I go buy the house. <laughs> yeah. It's a better return. Yeah, I hear you, man. Yeah. So um, uh, yeah, go ahead. 
Okay. <clears throat> uh, the next thing that pops up was, um, so after listening to a number of your videos, it sounds like you probably have at least one, if not more, um, crews helping you out. Oh, sure. How did, what challenges did you see? How did you overcome going from, okay, I got one good crew yep. to expand. I need another new crew or another new crew. So how did you, what challenges did you go through there? What do you recommend hurdles, things like that? Yeah. Um, I guess it, it's, I have no magic pill. It takes networking uh-huh. and learning. What I've really learned is good people know good people. Right. So I did find the first good crew because I, I'm lucky enough to be having, he did a lot of my repair work on all my units. Uh-huh. So I had a, I had a connection, right? I, I had an unfair advantage to the first crew. Right. Uh, but what quickly happened there is I outdid his capacity because he's, his main job is repairing units, right? Not doing right. full, <laughs> full blown remodels. Uh, so basically, uh, the answer is once I had one good crew, he networked and found me the second crew. And again, he networked and found me the third crew. Um, okay. You know, so good people know good people. Um, right. and, and I trust them. And, and again, I test them, right? I, you know, you still got to test, you got to, you know, test these new crews, get bids, do work, do drive-bys and drive-bys are hard for me, right? I'm two and a half hours away, uh, but I still do them. <laughs> yeah. So, I hear you, man. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the way to do it in my opinion. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Um, that's it. Yeah. Nothing else pops to mind. Very cool. I <laughs> want to make sure I turn it over to you so you can advertise yourself. If, if uh, you know, out of town buyers want to work with a local agent that knows the market, please advertise yourself, your company, uh, looking for private money, whatever you're looking for. This is your, your chance to ask for it. Um, yeah. So my name is Michael Hernandez. Uh, you can call me directly 559-994-3291. Um, I work uh, I have an office in Fresno, an office in Visalia. Uh, the company is Modern Broker. And um, I work basically Fresno County and Tulare County, um, Kings County a little bit, Madera County very little as well. Um, but if anybody has any buyer needs, um, investor needs, I'm, I'm here to help. Uh, as far as what I'm looking for, um, I'm starting to look into the, some meetups. Um, I definitely want to start networking a little bit more. Um, you know, picking people's brains, figuring out what, what more I can do and implement for myself to continue to grow and simplify things. So if anybody has help uh, here locally, I'd love to talk to you guys. Yeah. So a couple of things there. So uh, first you, you need to reach out to Jason Pritchard. He does a local yeah, his video. Was awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's one of a kind. I, I'd reach out to him in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah. And then second, do me a favor, list your phone number one more time. 559-994-3291. All right, Michael, thank you very much for this. It's been a great show. And again, I applaud you for being an agent that has taken action. Um, it, it's always fun to see. Uh, and thank you, for your, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael.